Now I want to show you how to draw the histogram. For the histogram, we have to select small elements, then we have to count the frequencies in each element, and then we draw the bars, and over the bar, we draw the frequency curve. Please see how we obtain this histogram. Now see these data values. Looking at the range of the data, which is in between 1.6 to 4.7 minimum and the maximum value available in the range we have identified certain intervals 1.5 to 1.9 2 to 2.4 2.5 to 2.9 3 to 3.4 3.5 to 3.9, 4 to 4.4, and 4.5 to 4.9. So whatever value falls in between this, these two values, we will consider as the frequency of occurrence. Frequency that will be over here. And this frequency data will help us to draw the histogram. Now look at first value is 2.2 that falls in this range. I can draw 1 then 4.1 that may be over here then 3.5 3.5 may go over here 4.5 will be up here, then 3.2, 3.2 is over here, 3.7, 3.7 will be here again, 3.9, then 3, again 5, then 4.2 will be here 5, and 3.5 is there 5 so I can count to 1 4 15 10 5 3 so these are the <coughs> frequency values for the occurrences in individual intervals now we can see that these are the frequency values here. The total what we see over here is 40. And out of the 40, we can obtain the value 0 0.05. 2 divided by 40 will give us the value. And the same way we can obtain these relative frequency values. Based on these values, we can have this histogram where we have the, the x values, midpoint of the interval. This is 1.5 to 1.9, then 2 to 2.4, and so on. So this is what we have the histogram. Over this, we can draw the frequency curve that will look like this will be called as probability distribution. To have a single standardized value to represent the spread of the data, the main parameters are standard deviation and variance. First we calculate variance then from variance we obtain standard deviation. We cannot have a standard deviation by simply subtracting each value with respect to the mean because if we don't square take a square sum it is going to be zero or the effect of the positive deviation is going to nullify the effect of the negative deviation that is why the square sum is taken as and n minus 1 instead of n is taken just because it is considered as degrees of freedom In data, degrees of freedom is considered as the number of occurrences which you can leave free. 
to make mean as you want. So now I'll show you how to calculate standard deviation. See again, in these data values, the mean value which we have already obtained was x bar as 3.4125 years. Now, if we have to calculate variance, which is nothing but summation xi minus x bar whole square divided by n minus 1. So it is, pick up this value, 2.2 minus 3.4125 square plus pick the next one, 4.1 minus 3.4125 square and so on keep on moving then we can have plus the last value 3.5 minus 3.4125 square divided by 40 minus 1 that comes about 19.264 upon 39 gives you a value 0.4939 approximately and from this if we have to find out the value of the standard deviation s then a square root of 0.4939 will give you a value of 0 0.7028 years. So this was the procedure to calculate standard deviation. A very important pictorial representation of the data is called box plot. Box plot covers 100% of the data that belongs to that particular uh, process or that particular output but box plot also identify the outlayers in the data which are extreme values cannot be considered as a part of the same system so these are called as outlayers now move on to this and I'll show you how to calculate the quartiles and then from quartiles how to draw the box plot that is very very helpful to understand the spread of the data and outliers present in the data which are considered as extreme kind of occurrence either on the lower side or on the higher side. These are data values arranged in an increasing order. Increasing order. When we have arranged in an increasing order, uh, we it is easy to find out the quartile values so quartile 1 quartile 2 quartile 3 represent 20 percent of the 25 percent of the data below that particular point so this is x n by 4 because in this case n is an even number so it is n by 4 plus x n by 4 plus 1 divided by 2. This is nothing but the median value. This is x 3n by 4 plus x 3n by 4 plus 1 divided by 2. The same we may write it as x n by 2 plus x n by 2 plus 1 divided by 2. Now you see here this point is this one over here midpoint is over here between 20 and 21 and the next point is between 30 and 31. So if you take the average of these two fortunately it is going to be 3.1 sorry It is 
3.1 when we see here it is nothing but 3.4 when you see here it is 3.8 plus 3.9 divided by 2 comes about 3.85 now in case we have to draw the box plot we will have the line representing the x value this is a point 3.4 we can come back to 3.1 and then we can move slightly more over here 3.85 to draw a box we can have a box over here that will represent these values box plot but in this box plot from midpoint that is nothing but the median value we have to move slightly over this side first of all we have to find out the interquartile range this is called interquartile range that is q3 minus q1 comes out to be 0.75 so the multiple 1.5 times 0.75 we will move on this side which is 1.125 and 0.1 1.5 times this on this side we will move that is also 1.125 when we move this way and we are here this is called as the, the range of the data as per whisker or what whisker or what we call box plot so now if any value this point will be in our case this point is going to be 2.275 2.275 and this point is going to be 4.525 if we add this value to 3.4 we are going to have this value over here now in the data we have to see how many values fall below this point and how many values fall over this point beyond that point so there are three points 2.2 1.9 1.6 2.3 1.9 1.6 and it's the same here we are having 4.7 twice over here so these values are called outliers which does not belong to the same properties of the data called outliers this is what we have what these are outliers over here and outliers over here. They are called outliers. Have extreme characteristics, extreme type of occurrences. So, that was so this was all about central properties and the spread of the data characteristics in terms of certain variables and the pictorial representation which we have placed before you. Good luck. Thank you.